Hello viewers, uh, welcome to my channel. Uh, today's topic is red blood cell count. Uh, but before starting this topic, I would like to request you to like, subscribe and share these videos to support this channel. And if you need more information about any disease or any medical condition, you can visit my website which is www.diseasesandtreatment.com. Now I come to the topic, what is red blood cell count? You know, the red blood cell count is a blood test uh, that your doctor uses to find out how many red blood cells or RBCs you have in the blood, you know. And it's also known as uh, erythrocyte count as well. Okay, so uh, the test is important because the red blood cells count contain hemoglobin, uh, which can, uh, which can, it's, and hemoglobin's function is that it carries oxygen uh, to your body's tissues, you know. And uh, the number of RBCs you can have affect your uh, how much oxygen your tissues receive, you know. And tissues need oxygen to function. Okay, so it's very important uh, component of the blood, and its function is that uh, it carries oxygen to the body cells. The next thing is, uh, what are the symptoms if uh, the red blood cell count is abnormal, you know? You know, if your red blood cell count is too high or if it's too low, you know, uh, you can experience like the symptoms and the complications like, uh, for example, if you have the low red blood cell count, you know, the symptoms may include like tiredness, you know, or maybe fatigue or shortness of breath and dizziness and weakness and uh, lightheadedness, you know, and uh, increased heart rate, you know, and headaches and maybe the pale skin, you know. So these are the symptoms of the low red blood cell count, okay? So if you have the high red blood cell count, uh, you could experience like fatigue again, uh, but the shortness of breath again, and the joint pains, you know, right? And uh, like the tenderness in the palms of the hands and the soles of the feet, and the itching of the skin, and maybe sleep disturbances, you know. So these are the... Uh, symptoms of uh, high uh, red blood cell count you know and if you experience these symptoms your doctor can order the red blood cell count test you know and uh, you know uh, a complete blood count test uh, you know the rbc count is a part of the complete blood count test you know so it always counted in the uh, complete blood count test you know and uh, the other tests uh, that uh, the complete blood count like maybe the red blood cells count or white blood cells and hemoglobin and uh, platelets okay and uh, hematocrit you know and uh, you know the hematocrit means uh, is the volume of the red blood cells in your body you know and uh, a hematocrit test measures the ratio of the red blood cells uh, in the blood, you know. And the platelets are the small cells uh, that circulate in the blood and their function is that they clot the blood, you know. And they allow the wounds to heal and prevent the excessive bleeding, you know. And uh, your doctor may order, and the white blood cells are the, you know, they are the soldiers, they fight against infections, you know. And uh, your doctor may order the test that uh, they suspect uh, that you have uh, the condition that affects your red blood cell counts, you know. And if you have the symptoms of the low blood oxygen, and uh, these include like uh, maybe the bluish discoloration of the skin, you know, or maybe the nails, you know confusion, irritability and irritability and the like irregular breathing, you know. And uh, the complete blood count uh, test will often be part of the routine physical examination and it can be an indicator of your overall health, you know, and uh, it may also be performed before surgeries, you know. And uh, if you have uh, diagnosed uh, any blood condition uh, that may affect your uh, red blood cell count, you know, you are taking uh, like uh, you're taking any medications you know that can affect your red blood cell count you know 
So your doctor may order the test to monitor your condition or the treatment, you know. And the doctors can use like uh, the complete blood count to monitor the conditions like leukemia and uh, infections of the blood, you know. So these are the very important tests like uh, complete blood count and the uh, red blood cell uh, count, you know. So the next thing is how do doctors perform uh, this test, you know. Well, the red blood count test is simple. Uh, it's a very simple test, a very basic test, and uh, a test uh, can be performed in your doctor's office, you know. And your doctor will draw a blood from your vein, and usually in the on the inside of your elbow, you know. And the steps involved uh, uh, in the blood draw include like that. It will clean and puncture the vein, you know. And uh, I mean, what is that? So initially, for, okay, for example, take this way. He will clean the site with the antiseptic cream or the lotion, you know, and uh, he will insert a band, you know, around your urn just to increase the flow of the blood in the vein. To it will be easy to find the vein, you know. And uh, then he will gently insert a needle uh, into the vein and collect a sample of the blood for the analysis, you know. And uh, then they will send the lab it, uh, to the. Uh, so then he will remove the elastic or the elastic band and uh, take out the needle, uh, put a little bit of pressure and maybe bandage on there just to stop the bleeding, you know. And uh, uh, that blood will be sent to the lab for the analysis, you know. So that is very simple. There are no major complications associated with the, uh, this procedure, you know. And uh, but which sometimes you may feel like a little bit bruising or maybe a little bit pain, you know, and uh, maybe infection, you know. But it's very rare. Now, uh, typically there is no special preparation is required, you know. Uh, but you should tell your doctor if you are taking any kind of medications, you know, or any, especially if they are over-the-counter supplements or any over-the-counter medications or blood thinners, especially aspirin, etc. You know, so you should tell your doctor in advance, you know. And uh, the next thing is about uh, like uh, the interpretation of the results, you know. Well, you, the normal red blood count uh, range from, uh, in many, you know, it range from 4.7 to 6.1 million cells per microliter. Okay. And the normal range from, for the women uh, who are pregnant, uh, sorry, who are not pregnant, you know, is 4.2 to 5.4 million per microliter you know. and the children uh, is 4 to 5.5 million per microliter you know. so these are the uh, normal ranges you know and uh, these ranges may vary depending on the lab you know there will be a little bit variation you know and uh, you know So next question is, okay, well, what if the uh, the reading is out of these ranges, you know, then what, what's the story in that case, you know? Well, you know, you have uh, like, uh, if your blood count is higher than normal, which means that you have uh, erythrocytosis, you know, and uh, erythrocytosis is maybe due to uh, cigarette smoking, it may be due to congenital heart disease or maybe dehydration or maybe uh, renal cell carcinoma or the type of the kidney cancer, you know, or maybe because of the pulmonary fibrosis or maybe uh, polycythemia vera, you know, so which is a bone marrow disease that uh, uh, causes the overproduction of the red blood cells, you know, and is associated with the genetic mutation. And uh, when you move to the uh, higher altitude, uh, like uh, climbing the mountain etc you know your red blood count may increase for several weeks because there's less oxygen in the air you know so these could be the causes you know and uh, the certain drugs like gentamicin uh, can increase your red blood cell count you know and uh, gentamicin is an antibiotic which is used to treat the bacterial infections in the blood you know and uh, a high red blood count may be 
result of sleep apnea and maybe pulmonary fibrosis maybe other conditions that can cause the low oxygen levels in the blood you know and the kidney disease etc you know and uh, if the number is low uh, than the normal it may be due to the anemia or maybe to the blood loss maybe bone marrow failure like failure you know and hemolysis uh, you know which means the uh, uh, the red blood cell destruction you know it is caused by the, the transfusions or maybe the blood vessel injuries you know or maybe internal bleeding or leukemia or uh, like malnutrition you know and uh, multiple myelomas uh, nutritional deficiencies poor diet uh, thyroid disorders so there are multiple reasons for the low blood cell count you know and there are certain drugs that can lower the red blood cell count as well like um, chemotherapy drugs or uh, like uh, uh, hydrantoins, you know, which are traditionally used to treat the epilepsy and the muscle spasm. So there are certain drugs which can or reduce the number of uh, red blood cells in the blood, you know. And, uh, you know, the blood cancers can affect the production and the function of the red blood cells, you know. And they can also result in the unusual red blood cell count levels, you know. And uh, each type of the blood cancer has the unique impact on the red blood cell count. And there are three main types of the blood cancers, you know. And they are uh, uh, leukemia, lymphoma, and myeloma, you know. So leukemia is uh, uh, the blood cancer where, uh, which impairs the bone marrow's ability to produce the platelets, uh, platelets and the red blood cell count, you know. And in the case of the lymphoma, uh, which affects the white blood cells of the immune system you know and uh, in case of myeloma it prevents the normal production of antibodies okay so there are three main types of uh, blood cancer so leukemia lymphoma and myeloma so leukemia is where the bone marrow is ability impaired so as a result it uh, produces less uh, red blood cells in platelets you know and uh, in case of lymphoma the white blood cells uh, uh, are affected you know and in case of the myeloma you know the it prevents the, the production of antibodies, you know. So these are the main types of the cancers. The next thing is what will happen if uh, your uh, uh, red blood cell count is abnormal, which means it's lower or high, you know. Well, your doctor will discuss the outcome of the results with you and depending on the results, they may need other additional tests to confirm the diagnosis and the cause of the low, low or high blood, uh, red blood cells, you know. And uh, this can include like the blood smears, which means that where a film of your blood is examined under a microscope, you know. And uh, the blood smears can help to detect the abnormalities in the blood cells, such as uh, sickle cell anemia, you know. A white blood cell disorder, such as leukemia or uh, like a blood borne parasite like malaria, you know. And the bone marrow biopsy is another option, uh, which can be done to see. Uh, the different cells of the blood cells that are made within the bone marrow, you know. And uh, other diagnostic tests like ultrasounds and uh, electrocardiograms can look for the conditions affecting the kidneys and the heart, you know. And so, so these are the tests your doctor will order, you know. And uh, the lifestyle changes can also uh, affect your red blood cell count, you know. Like, uh, maintaining a healthy diet and avoiding the vitamin B deficiencies, you know, so it has positive impact, you know, exercising regularly, uh, avoiding the aspirin, you know, which is a blood thinner, uh, which can cause excessive bleeding and don't use it uh, without any uh, prescription, you know, unless it's advised by your doctor, you know, avoid the smoking. So this way you can uh, have a healthy lifestyle to maintain a good uh, uh, red blood cell count, you know. And you may be able to decrease your red blood cell count with the uh, uh, lifestyle changes or uh, like uh, if it's high, you know, you can reduce the amount of iron in your, uh, in your diet, you know, uh, avoid the diuretics, uh, the water pills and quit smoking. So this way you can decrease the uh, number of red blood in your uh, blood just simply by following the strict lines for the healthy diet, you know. And uh, uh, dietary changes uh, can play a major role uh, in the home treatment by increasing or decreasing uh, your red blood cell count, you know. 
So you may be able to increase your red blood cell count with the diet like adding rich iron diet, you know, or maybe increasing the copper and uh, in your diet, you know, and uh, getting more vitamin B12 with the foods like eggs, meats and uh, fortified, uh, like uh, fortified cereals, you know, so this way it helps to increase the number of red blood cells in the blood. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you need more information about any disease, any medical condition, you can visit my website which is www.diseasesandtreatment.com and please do not forget to like, subscribe or share these videos to support this channel. Thank you. Good one.